Uh, we just have to quickly go over this um, consent form. Um, there's no risks to this interview. choose to redact any information after it, um, we have the contact details for a professor, you can just contact him and ask him about that. Um, do you agree to this? Yeah. Great. Um, we just need you to sign this and then there's another form about uh, rights of audio and photo. So, if you could please What's today's date? 18th. I need something back too. Do I put my address down here? Uh, yeah, the where we are now. Okay. Not really. I mean, yeah. you can, but <laughs> that's not really like intelligent. Yeah, Tommy's not that loud. So okay. Well, we'll try and not be loud. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this is Elizabeth. I'm here with Matt Way and Um What's the address here? 2147 North 33rd Street. Great. It's uh, June 18th. Um, could you just introduce yourself quickly, Gawain? Uh, I'm Gawain, and uh, I guess I'm going to be a sophomore at UWM. Really? Um, so what are you studying at UWM? Business, marketing. Okay. How's that so far? Uh, it's all right. I mean, it's not the best yet. Uh, you just did like Gen Ed in the first year, though, isn't it? So you're going into your major. Hopefully, sometime soon. Okay. And do you commute to? How do you commute to UWM then? Uh, I commute by car. Mm -hmm. How's that? Is that easy, or is it far away? It's easy and far, mm -hmm. but that's the best choice I got. Yeah. Um. And have you? in this neighborhood your whole life? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been living here for about five years. Mm -hmm. um, so where did you move from? I moved from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I'm 14 years. Been there for a very long time. Is that a big change? Yes, it was a very big change when I first moved here. Like hard or? Well, I think at first it was hard, but at the same time it was easy for me. Did you come with your family? Is that maybe why it was easy? Yeah, that was pretty easy. I guess that was, yeah. What would you say, like, are, like, big differences between here and where you were? Oh, well, the big difference is that down there, I grew up with a lot of, like, like Caucasian people. And then when I came up here, you know, I can't, I, I was just like, wow, there's a lot of African Americans around. So that was, like, big change. So that was one of your first impressions when you got here? Yes, it was. And um, what other kind of impressions did you have of the neighborhood when you first arrived? I was like, wow. I mean, I, w I lived with my cousin at first because, you know, we just had this house. So my parents were still building it. Well, at their neighborhood, I was like, it was really, like, weird because there's so much African-Americans. But, yeah, there's... There was a lot of impression. It was just really weird. 
So your parents were like working on the house before you even like, arrived? Yes. What kind of changes did they make to the house? I'm actually not sure. You're not sure? <laughs> no, because I wasn't here with her in that process. Okay, so when you arrived it was just completely ready to move in? Yes. Okay. And has the house kind of changed since you've been living here at all? Uh, no. I mean, whenever something breaks, we fix it. So, you know, I guess it changes as it goes. I, yeah. I don't know what has changed. It looks the same to me. Okay. Are you handy? Yeah. Us? No, not really. No. You have, like, chores? <laughs> yes, I have to. I have to. There's no doubt about that. What kind of chores do you have to do? Well, if I don't work... Uh, sometimes I wake up and cook for the family, but if I work, I just decide to sleep till I go to work. Is cooking an important part of family life for you, would you say? Yes, it is. It's uh, very important because, I mean, that's how you gotta eat and that's how you're gonna live. So you gotta cook to eat anyway, so I might as well just cook for everyone. Could you tell us a little bit more about the experience of cooking around the house? Well, Maybe describe a daily routine a bit. Well, daily routine for me, if there's rice out on the counter, I would cook rice. And if there's a meat, I would just cut it up and throw whatever vegetables in there. And I would just throw whatever sauce in there and just mix it all up. Sometimes it varies, so it's all different types of food I make every day. So mainly just you who does the cooking, or who else? It's sometimes me or my sister-in-law that cooks. Um, who do you cook for in your family? Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> so you're in demand. Yes. Cause if I don't cook, then no one else can cook really? besides my sister-in-law. And how many um, siblings do you have? I have three brothers and a sister. So a lot of hungry mouths. Yes. Right? Very. Does that ever get like stressful? Um, well, not really. No. no. So you kind of enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of fun actually. Yeah. Like, um, it's part of family life. Nowadays. Yeah, it's part of family life, so cooking is the way to go. It's really fun. <laughs> Are there any other kind of important parts of family life that you can think of? Important for you. I'm actually not sure. Not sure. Because I don't know, we're all grown up, so we're all pretty busy. So sometimes we don't get to do a lot of things together. So I want to know. So you're busy a lot, would you say, like, with your work? Yes. And where do you work? I work at uh, Heiser Quick Motors. It's a car dealership. Oh, okay. I'm not, no, like, I'm not a. I just work as a receptionist. How long have you been working now? A couple months. Probably like three, four months now. How far away is it from here? Is it? It's about 22 minutes, according to GPS. Okay. Um, what do your parents work as? They work at companies, but I don't know where they work at. I don't know, it's just kind of far from where we live. Okay, so they have to commute. Yes, they do. It's probably like about 20 to 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And did, have they always had those jobs like when you were growing up? Uh, yes. So you said that your parents were working on the house when you arrived. So who were you living with your parents back in um, North Carolina? Uh, no, we actually came up with them. So we actually lived with my cousin though for a while till this house was done and what was it like growing up there how was the neighborhood there for you where and uh, because where you were before when you were born oh. and you grew up well i wouldn't say we had a neighborhood because all that land was bought from like my dad and all his brothers so we all had like houses right there it's like four houses so i guess it was just surrounded by forests and you know trees and dirt so, I mean, we didn't really have any other kids besides just us kids as family. So, we, I grew up pretty close together until everybody separated. That's 
That's interesting. So you grew up in a kind of rural area and your family owned a lot of land and houses. Yeah. So you, all, all your family were in the houses? Yes. Okay, wow. So it's like a small little town where yeah. it's just your family that are living in. That's quite an individual experience from like maybe other people who grew up in an urban neighbourhood, I think. Yeah. Do you think it's different from like the friends maybe how they grew up oh very very different yeah. uh, how old were you when you arrived here i was 14 or 15. Mm-hmm. so you were just like in the middle of school yes probably the big probably like not even not even like two months with their school like a month mm-hmm. um so just going back to like when you grew up, I find sorry, I find that's really interesting. <laughs> that your family just lived in these different houses. So how was it split up into the houses? Well, there would be like one house right there, and then I don't know what those trees are called. It's just looking like evergreen trees. I don't know what's it called. And then there would be my house right there, and then those trees again, and then my cousin's house. And across the road, there would be another house over there. And that's how it was formed. Okay, and how was it like, so you had your cousins in one house, you in another house, and who were in the other two houses? My cousin and, they're like a family of ours that lived across the street from us. Oh, okay. So, um, so did you like play on the, you said there was like a field there or the forest? Well, there was a lot of like trees, so we just call it forest. We just go play around it, you know like regular kids and there's dirt everywhere so we always play with dirt anyways so yeah that's how pretty much it that's, that's cool could you tell us more about like uh, how you played like what kind of things uh we would play a uh, house for somebody's mom and dad i guess and uh we would just play a lot of different things we'll use uh bamboo sticks for like swords or something and we'll like try to kill something just for fun because for little kids we used to just run around, be able to do whatever, but that's about it. Not much to do. Did you think that, did you enjoy growing up in that kind of environment? Do you think it was more fun maybe than if you uh, grew up in a neighborhood like this? Or? I think it was more fun growing down there. It's just, yeah. And how do your younger siblings Play. Do they play outside here? Or? Well, they were a little young to play outside, so they never really came out. Okay. Uh, what are your neighbors like around here? Well, they're pretty old, so they're quiet. Uh, sometimes they they talk really loud, so you can actually hear it and wake you up. But other than that, it's really uh, nice and quiet. Mm-hmm. So you don't you don't speak to them all that much. No, I actually do not. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, can I stop you guys for a second? Yeah. Is there any way we can get to take off that jacket? Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's just that I'm... We're just trying to hang it, around a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I can't because... Oh, okay. That's fine. But we're just don't move around a lot. Okay. That's okay. Just a little... <laughs> okay. Sorry. Technical difficulties. Yeah. It's fine. Really oh, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's just too sensitive. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Like it's fine. Yeah. So sorry. It's okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, do you have any questions? Um, so do we still have relatives in North Carolina? Yeah, we do. Do you visit them? Uh, no, I haven't visited them in a long time, ever since I came up here. So, do you miss families there? I miss families there, but I don't miss living there, I guess. Because down there, I didn't have a lot of opportunities than I, when I moved up here. I have a lot more opportunities than I did down there. So, that was a good thing for me. What kind of opportunities? Well, when I was in high school up up here, I joined a program called Upper Bound. 
Sorry, what did you say? I joined a program called Upper Bound, yeah. and that was a very good program. And down there, I didn't really do anything, so you know, I guess coming up here was really a good thing. And finding a job and also yeah, yes. being a student and everything, you find it hard to juggle those. Sometimes at point, I just want to give up, but just gotta go through it. Yeah, someone's gotta do it. Um, so, do you have other family member members around here? Yes, I do. I have a family member just like three blocks away. Really? Who is that in relation to you? Uh, he's my dad's brother, so we're cousins, first cousins. Okay, so do you see them a lot? All the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you like cook for them, or like what do you do with them? Uh, no, we just hang out whenever we can. Because everybody's busy as well, so we, we don't really get to hang out all the time, but I do see them here and there. And have they lived here for a long time? Yes, they actually have. They've been there for almost eight years, I believe. Eight years. Okay. Um, so where uh, do the families go and get it together? Well, it's either my house or my cousin's house. That's about it. Well, we have family gatherings. We would just cook. And after we're done cooking, which takes a long time. And we just eat and just sit around and talk about life, talk about how everybody's doing. That's all we do when we have family gatherings. Um, so, would you say that you like living in this neighborhood right now? Yeah, I do like living in this neighborhood. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. What did you think it would be? Well, <clears throat> just hearing from like other people, like my cousin, they were saying it's really bad. You hear shootings all the time. But when I started living here, you know, I don't really hear a lot of shootings. I probably hear like one or two, but it's far from the neighborhood, so it's really quiet. I just like living here. So you were kind of concerned about safety. Yes. Okay. But it's not, it didn't kind of live up to that expectation. You think it's safer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's safer here. Because down the block where my cousin lived, it's, it, it was horrible. It's just horrible. What kind of things happened there? Well, I think they told me their, their house got broken into before. And they're like, I think couple of houses down from them it was like a drug dealer house oh, wow. so yeah um, so that must have been quite scary for them yes it was did they did they contact the police like what happened what actually happened yeah. yes they did but i mean you can't catch a person if you don't have any identity of them did they take a lot of stuff actually no they didn't because my cousin they were inside the house they just kicked down the door and that was about it. Have you ever had anything like stolen or anything happen to you around here? Uh, no. No? Had a fairly good experience. Yes. Here. What's your favorite part of the neighborhood? Uh, well, my favorite part of the neighborhood? I guess when they talk really, really loud. Yeah. They wake you up. Yep. Is that a daily occurrence? Uh, no. Probably like here and there. But they decide to wake up and go outside and talk. So people outside in the street talking loud. Like the house next door, they're the one that wakes up and they talk really loud. What are they doing? I actually don't know. You don't know? No. They're just talking loudly. Okay. And that happens like daily? Sometimes. Usually in the summer, like around now, it usually do happen daily, but maybe it's not hot enough yet. Do you speak to them at all? Uh, no, I don't. So you don't have a relationship with them other than that they wake you up a lot? No, nope, that's not at all. 
Um, are there any kind of changes you would like to see in the, the universe? Ch changes? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just not really because you can't really change the neighborhood if not everyone's willing to communicate with you. So it's just going to be the way it is until everybody actually communicates with each other and see if it could actually change. Can't say that I want anything to change, but, you know, we're just going to have to live it how it is because it's hard to talk to people who can't communicate with you as well. So it's really nothing to change. Because I think that race is race is a problem too. So you know it's hard to actually go talk to them. You know, I mean they might. I don't know how they they are. You know, I don't know their attitude. I don't know their personality. So it's harder to actually go and talk to them. Um, so you've have you had like experiences where that kind of difference to say racial differences like. Yeah. Well, yes, actually, I have. I mean, I think going back to high school when I moved up here, it was, to me, I feel like it was really racism because, like, African American be like, are you Chinese? Do you eat cats and dogs? I was like, that's not what we do. We don't eat that. And by the way, I'm not Chinese, you know, this. Because I guess to them, they think all Asians look alike, but I'm like, there's a lot of difference between other race in the Asian community. I did at one point, but then as it continues, you kind of just get used to it, so you don't really care, you know, because they're just being really childish, so you just don't, you don't care about it anymore. Have you ever tried, like, actually express your own ethnicity, like being a mom, rather than you know, just trying to show them that I'm not Chinese, but have you ever done anything that you feel that actually show that you're different from Chinese? Besides, you don't eat dogs and cats. <laughs> I actually no, I haven't, because I just yeah, I just wouldn't do it. I mean, cause I feel like yeah, I just they don't want to. I mean, they, I mean, if they ain't gonna understand, that they they won't understand. Even if you tell them that your mom or show them that your mom, they won't understand, cause they're high schoolers. So you know, they act like a kid. So you don't think that many people know about Hmong people? Oh, <clears throat> no, I don't think so. Because we're a very small community. So, you know, I think whatever happens in the Hmong community just stays in the Hmong community. Okay. So, um, what do you think is keep, keeping it that way? Is it family? No, I think it's just being too stubborn. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is stubborn? Who do I think is stubborn? Yeah, like what, what, what kind of people in your community do you think are being stubborn? Just more people in general, cause they're they're a little hard headed to actually go out and think more already. So it's just harder for I think us to like just go out there, even if we wanted to. Like we want to express a lot of things, but we won't express it. Uh, me? Well, I just, I guess I just want to show people that, you know, we're Hmong people. We're, we matter too. It's not because we're just Hmong people. So, um, like how old are you? I'm 18. Turning 19 pretty soon. Okay. So, would you say there's like a difference between you as a young Hmong person and um, maybe Hmong people of other generations, like older people? Yes, there is. A very big difference. Can you explain that? Well, the older generation, like my dad, they want us to do everything. Like, so I'm a woman in the Hmong community, so we're supposed to cook, wake up early, cook, clean the house, like a regular Hmong person, woman. But to me, I was like, we don't need to wake up early because we're still sleeping. Who wants to wake up that early to cook and be tired the whole day, you know? This is a lot of in in the most in the most community and generation, I guess for us, well, let's see. 
Well, there's just a lot of difference, but I can't really name them because it's not coming to my head right now. But you're, you're a lot of things, like you work, you're a student, and you're also doing stuff around the house. Like you said, as a woman, there's also a difference. Yes. So it's not just generational, it's about being a woman. Could you talk about that a little bit? Well, being a woman in a Hmong community, you have a lot of responsibility because you just have a lot of responsibility, like chores, you taking care of kids. You just have to do a lot of expectations that you don't meet, but you have to meet it. Picture of like, was she? Did she have a lot of response? Did you see that she had a lot of responsibilities when you were growing up? Yes. I think it was hard on her, but what can I do? Okay. Um, so, how do you use the space within the home? Are you out a lot, or are you here a lot? Oh, uh, well, ever since <clears throat> I had a job and I started going to school, I was barely home. But now that sometimes I'm home, I don't know how I use it. I just use it. Well, there's not a lot of space in my house, actually, because everything is either a storage room or everybody's sleeping in it. So how many people live in here right now? Uh, let's see. About eight people. We just have a family visiting. That's all. That's why it seems a lot. Do you have people that uh, come and visit you? Family? Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. Yeah. How often is that? Uh, it's not really often. It's probably once in a blue moon. And whereabouts are they coming from? Um, from North Carolina or Minnesota or California. Okay. You have relatives in California? Yes, I do. Okay. Have you ever gone out and visited them? Yes, I have. Uh, I went there recently for the Hmong New Year. The, the Hmong New Year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, could you tell us about that, actually? Uh, the Hmong New Year, well, it's just where a lot of Hmong people just come together. You know, there's singing, there's dancing, there's food, my favorite part. And they sell a lot of, like, movies, traditional clothing, just a lot of things. And there's ball tossing as well. When I went to the Fresno New Year, it's really big, so it's a week long. It's di- it's different from the Milwaukee Mong New Year, because it's, it's only held for like three days maybe, and the Fresno New Year is held for one week. So what's the atmosphere like out there? Uh, it's well, it's good, it's positive, but to me, I don't like going to those things. Cause I just find it boring. Cause I I just walk around with my parents, and that's about it. No, I don't. I only like the food. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, just like that. Um, so, have you been to the one in Milwaukee? Or? Yes, I have. I went there like twice, and I stopped going. Why? Because it was boring? <laughs> yes, because it was boring. I mean, there's really nothing to do after you walk around once. Unless you just sit there by the stage where they sing and dance, and all these talents people come. That's about it. Are there any other Hmong events that happen in this neighborhood or activities that? Uh, no, there there isn't. Would you like to see more? Are you disinterested? I would like to see more of Hmong community uh, events and activities going on. And how do you think um, that could happen? You were talking about communication before. Well, if that was to happen, how it would happen? I don't know, actually. You don't know. Okay. Um, do you have many mom friends in this neighborhood besides family? Actually, no, I don't. Um, are there any other mom people in college? Yes, I've encountered a couple. Mm-hmm. So where did you know Tommy? Like from his 
school? Uh, from school. I met him through one of my friends. Uh, I just go to Walmart. It's down by Miller Parkway. That's the closest Walmart to us. Have you been to the CNS grocery store on Lisbeth? The Hmong Asian General Grocery Store. What is it again? Uh, it's called CNS. I don't think so. No. no. No, never been there. No. Do you feel like you know this neighborhood well? Like if you met a young girl in a different grocery store or on the street, do you feel like things to do? Yeah, I, I believe. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I know all this. <clears throat> I don't know all the streets, but it's actually pretty easy. When I first moved there, I didn't even know these numbers. And streets. I was like, dang, it's all confusing because there's always one ways and I was like, dang, this is so confusing. Do you have, um, what, not necessarily wrong people, but just friends around the neighborhood? Like, how did you meet them? Is it mainly through school? Or? Uh, they were just mainly from school. I don't have any, like, close small friends that live around here because they live all the way on the other side. person like Tommy it's interesting that he can actually recognize a person that he's mom just from first sight he saw it if you ever see someone like that would you like to talk to them if not there's no you know any interaction like necessary like you have to talk to them but would you like to talk to them in some way uh, I would like to talk to them but you know sometimes they might think we're a creep or stalker why would you come up and talk to me you know oh. just like if I saw you walking down the sidewalk or something and I come up to you and just talk to you, that'd be like weird, you know, me to come talk to you. We have like no interaction of each other. I don't even know you don't know me. I just came up to you and talk to you. They just probably think I'm weird. Well, you sound like saying hi. That's like, like normal at all? I could say hi, but they probably give me a, like, what, what kind of look is this, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that's different yeah. because I, when I first moved to states, I saw everybody, I don't know, stranger on the street, say hi, you know, that's a difference. Yeah, there's a lot of difference. But that's not happening among Hmong people in this neighborhood, you are saying? No, because there's actually not a lot of Hmong people that live in this neighborhood. There's only like probably one family or two families that I know of, but other than that, I'm not sure who other, other Hmong people live down here or not. Do you get to know them through the, like, Milwaukee Chinese New Year, like, Hmong Chinese, uh, no, Hmong New Year, sorry. Um, do I get to know them? Yeah, everybody go there, right? And yeah, but, I don't know, no, I don't think everybody knows each other, they just go with their friends, so that's all you hang out with, so you don't get to actually know them, you don't in get to encounter with them, because there's so many Hmong people, so you don't know who is who if you don't know their name. Where's your favorite part of this neighborhood? Where do you go very often? Actually, nowhere. <clears throat> nowhere. I just stay at home all the time. Where's your best spot in this house? Where do you stay for a longer time during the day? Um, the living room. The living room. The TV? Yeah. And where your families go? Like your dad and mom, where do they like to go in this house? I think they just like to stay in their bedroom. <clears throat> Uh, well, I actually haven't gone to Washington Park. I've only been there like once to play football. I mean, when I drive past it, I'm just like, it looks really nice. There's a lot of African people playing basketball all the time. Other than that, that's the only time I actually see it. 
I never really, you know, go in there and actually walk around it. What's your favorite fruit? Well, that question is not, I don't know. There's a lot of favorite fruit I have. There's not even one that I don't like. <laughs> Are they like uh, in particular monk fruit or any kinds of fruit, like American fruit? It's all kinds, depending on what day I feel like cooking. It's mostly monk fruits, but you know, sometimes I switch it up. I'm tired of monk fruit sometimes. How do you learn cooking Thai or Hmong food? Uh, from my mom. Yeah, I learned a lot of things from her. Could you share some experience like well, she's teaching you cooking? Well, when she's, well, I don't think I really watch her teach me. I just like look at her, what she's put in there, and I just try to do my own version of that part. But you know, I tell her to taste it, and it's good, you know, it's good. It's funny because it's exactly how Tommy described how he made pad thai. Yeah. Just tasting stuff and he's like, this tastes good, this tastes good, just put it all in. Yep. <laughs> so uh, you learned a lot from your mom when you were growing up too? Yes, I did. What other kind of things did you learn from your mom? Well, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, what other things other than cooking did you learn from your mom? Uh, let's see helping people, being kind to others, even when you don't want to. Actually, and learning how to be a nya, which is assist, being like a, a sister-in-law to other families. So say you're married to, this say I'm married to my boyfriend, I have to be a nya. So I have to like do, wake up, cook for all of them, and do clean the house, take care of kids, take care of everyone in the house. I'm learning in the process. Still learning. Yes, it's always every day is always learning. Uh, from your from your mother still. Yes. Still from your mom. Well, yes, here and there we're we're not busy. Is she busy at work? Yeah. Well, I, I perhaps she is because she works till she works from past six to two. I'm not sure. And when she comes home, she's tired, so she just sleeps till like five, six. Then by that time, I'm probably just getting off work. So, do you find it? Do you think that your schedules make it hard to spend time together? Just on the weekdays. On the weekends, it's I could see them. Sometimes I don't at all because they're out going. They're going to do like other things. They gotta go to other events that they have to attend. So what kind of things do you do on the weekends? If I don't work on the weekends, then I just stay home or watch Netflix. <laughs> Typical. What's your favorite Netflix show? I don't know. I, I don't have one. It's too many. Yes. <laughs> Does your mom farm at all? Uh, she doesn't. Mm-hmm. Your family don't grow anything? Nope. We just get everything from the store or our aunt that we have. She farms and my mom just go and ask her for things that we need. Do you see other mom people grow things? Uh, yes. All the time. When I go over to their house, I'll see vegetables growing. So what do you think that keep your family from growing things like other people? I think it's just hard to maintain. And I think because my mom gets pretty tired after work, so she just, like, wants to relax. And we don't really care to, you know, farm vegetables. Yeah, you want everything from the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Anything you feel like talking about that they didn't cover? Okay, back to my North Carolina house, where those houses are located. There's like a forest in the middle, and then there would be another side where there's three houses on the other side. Those used to be our house. It was trailer houses, and then we moved to the other side. Okay. 
Uh, yes, I did. Uh, who, yeah, who? Who lived those? Yeah, the house is on the other side. The other side? Now or back then? It was my family, my cousin, and my other cousin. It was like a little town, I guess. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.